Radio. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Campbell's Comments Live. Love doing live. Mark Barton. Hello, mate. How are you, mate? Very, very good. I've had a I've had a pretty solid nutrient nutrient week. Fair to say, this one was a little bit of an unscheduled one, but it's one that we we both uh, felt necessary to get it out there, and we thought, why not get it out there in a live format? People can see that it's not rehearsed. Um, yep. and the likes, and we probably would have had it a touch earlier, except I've only just got home from work, so it makes it makes it that little bit tricky. But a couple of people have made comment to me today, Bardo, about um, Sydney sale and, and whether it's actually going to um, happen, and I rang you, um, and you were a little bit concerned, so you thought, well, the best way we can do it is get on the front foot and tell people where we stand, and that's what we're going to try and do. No, absolutely, mate. Now, look, I think it's really important. I think we're... Uh probably still a fortnight from opening <clears throat> entries for our sales but um, I think it's yeah it was um, yeah when you you called I said no look let's make sure people know we've got um, absolute commitment to Sydney and Melbourne it's um, funny when you ask where's it where's the better catalogue and I don't think we can pick it based on the horses we know we're going to have um, but no look, definitely 20th of February um, Riverside Stable Sydney it's the same weekend as the Chariots of Fire which is a race free Sunday, so I think it'll be a really, yeah, really exciting way to start the Sydney um, sales series for uh, for the stand of red units this next season. Got a couple of people already watching live, which is great. Philip Wood, Dennis Wilch, um, Dave Moran actually has also joined in too, which we will discuss on that very shortly. A brand ambassador for for Nutrium, which is which is really really key. But Sydney sale. So the Sydney sale here, Nutrium is committed to holding the New South Wales first season sale for the season twentieth. Um, of February at the Inglis Riverside Stable Complex, which is a state-of-the-art complex. It's going to be very, very exciting um, and exciting times um, going ahead. And it says their entries open. They're not even open yet. So I don't know how people can say that it's not going ahead, but they don't open until the 30th of August. Um, and then they're open till, for all of September, basically. Yeah, look, like we said before, mate, we've talked about we needed to do some work on our computer systems, um, our entry systems, our, our website, and to make sure the technical guys had what we felt would be better for uh, the vendor experience, we put it back. The other one was feedback last year, mate. It was a very long, protracted yielding uh, program for clients, nominating a horse effectively nine months out, ten months out from actually sale time. So we reckon we can actually turn those around. Uh, we can have that proof back in, in October, and we can get a catalogue in, in November, and everyone's got a catalogue before Christmas, and sale in February and April. Absolutely. Anyone watching uh, this who has any questions for Bardo about the Sydney sale, about the Melbourne sale, spring sale that just closed, which will be running from the 3rd to the 6th, please fire the questions in. Myself and Bart Mark will go along. We can talk all night. Um, we quite often have a five-minute conversation that we look around and the family's gone to bed, haven't they, Bardo? <laughs> yeah. It's, it's probably a bit of a passion about this, this, all the, the industry if you're a horse person. Um, that's like I said. I'll talk to you about any any breed of horse, Nelly. But it's um, it's yeah, it's it's um, getting up to that busy time. And look, I ducked out to Wagga today to see the track, and it's yeah, just nice to see almost a spring day there today. And it's um, it's yeah, it's exciting for us here in a lot of last seasons um, yearlings that are actually coming through into their second preps and how those horses are going. So it's not really enjoying becoming part of the industry more so. Did you get to see my Canadian mate out there today at all? Greg Gangle was he on track? Yeah, he was. Greg was there. I don't think he works officially till September, but um, he's very much in the role. And I think it's um, yeah, he had some ideas there that I think were interesting. And look, we talked about that. You know, Wagga's home for me. Um, it's a heartland breeding area. It always has been. The Riverina are a really important uh, part of harness racing. And yeah, how can we collectively do things? We're both new to. I'm new to the sport. He's new to the area. Um, what, what ideas can we come up with? And I think that's that's exciting for the sport if people are progressive and thinking about what we can do better. Absolutely. I saw Greg, um, he was out at Yerby and uh, he put a he put a video up and everyone was trying to work out what horse it was, but uh, should have known the Canadian would have come out in him. It was Warrawee Needy that is a horse that, you know, I hope for, for Yerby's sake it does take off, but a lot of the Australians don't know a lot about him, but the Canadians absolutely love him. So, so that is key. So again, back to getting back to to the Sydney sale, though, Mark. Uh, you know, these rumours that have circulated um, in the last few days about it not going ahead are completely false, basically. Yeah, hundred percent false, mate. Um, I, I guess yeah, we 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 love the one and two horse vendors. They're, they're our bread and butter businesses, but 
Um, last year, the Brooklyn Lodge took a, a draft of horses to Melbourne for us last year, around 20. Um, yeah, that's probably one really important one. We, we asked if they take their whole whole year's income or a significant part of their annual, annual production to Melbourne for us. Um, and one of the things that we committed to that business was we will be in Sydney. Um, they've committed 20 horses, a, a lovely draft of, of young horses they've said already coming along, winners or young yearlings now. Um, I know one of the difficult jobs for the likes of men started with 50 horses last year was getting them all done. And I know, you know, yeah, talk to Peter Judd and he said, look, we're going to split them down the middle, have yeah, quality horses at both. So those sort of guys alone, like that's that's the best part of 50 uh, horses in Sydney, just with those two two vendors. So now we've got a really solid start. Um, I, I can tell you, uh, the, the Bill and Ann Anderson, the, their consignment of nutrient, they want to get the early money with the first sale in, in Sydney, and they want to bring horses to the Sydney market. And you know, they're probably one of the most um, established um, um, stables as far as the performance of their broodmare band. So I, I think. You look at that and other Victorian breeders that have said, look, we want to spread. Mark, your audio's gone, mate. I've just lost your audio for some reason. See if you're there now, mate. No. Something just died on his audio. Hopefully it comes back. Just trying to um, work on his audio now. No. Nope. He's not sure what happened, but it's just completely died, as everyone can can hear. His vision's still there. You, you still look good, mate. Um, <laughs> he can still he, he can still hear me. I love I love live TV. Um, not sure what's going on. Is it charged up? That that is always key, Bardo. Hopefully, it's charged up enough that it's got power. Not working. Uh, we can go to plan B if I know where plan B is you have to have a, a good phone in front of you I don't know what I've done with the bat phone uh, this is just not working right at the minute Bardo but uh, hang on hang on mate I'll ring you you uh, don't stress too much I'll uh, get you on the phone if you can still hear me we're all good um, no, I've got to just, uh, sorry about this guys, we're just uh, working through a few technical issues, but I should have him on the phone now. Unfortunately, that shut his vision off. No, we should be back now, mate. Now we've got the feedback of both, Prado. Unfortunately, that other one's working now. Yeah, how's that? No, nah, still got the double feedback. Why is that other one not coming through? Can you talk now, mate? No, nah, it won't come through. It'll be right. We've, we've, we've got you anyway. We've just got a little bit of double feedback for some reason. I don't know why that's doing it on the other one. Live TV, mate. It's it's very funny where you live in Wagga. It can be a bit tricky, can't it? Yeah, and it should be fine. No, nah, now we're right. Now we're right. So, yeah. We do. We definitely have a little bit of feedback there. What we might have to do, Bardo, is actually kill that audio and just uh, kill that vision off the other one. I think I'm getting double feeds back through. Um, you talk anyway. Um, yeah, no worries. Yeah, we get it. Get the echo. So maybe shut your vision off, mate. We might have to do that. I think. Just hang on. How's that? Is that any better? Nah, worse, mate. Nah. So Mark's now turned that other. I'd be turning that other one off, mate. We'll just go with the audio. Um, and go from there and see how it goes. I've got... Um, yeah, hang on, have you got me now? Yeah, I've definitely got you. I've got Cam Bray from NZB giving me a technical advice, mate. I'm not sure not sure exactly how how that um, is, meant to, is meant to work. But anyway, we've still got you. That's the one thing about modern technology, mate. It's just a pity, pity we lost um, the audio off your vision there before. Um, but we were just saying that the sale is definitely happening. So I wanted to ask you about two elephants in the room, and that's why I did want to keep you online. Um, while I'm talking, I'm going to try and do something so that we don't have that uh, that dead screen there. We'll work something out um, in a minute. But um, elephant in the room, okay? So one thing that gets said a lot um, is you weren't having a Sydney sale, and now you are having a, a sorry a Melbourne sale at the same time as you are having a a Sydney sale, and now you are. And a lot of people say that that that's due to the likes of Ben Start and them telling you guys what to do. 
it's actually not the case. You're just working together. Is that right? A- absolutely. Look, w- one thing, um, I-, I couldn't underestimate the fact that, you know, a, a business like that that brings 50 yearlings to sale, um, when you go through a catalogue of, say, you know, let's say Sydney with 100 horses and Melbourne with 150 or so, which is, you know, they're, they're, they're the rough numbers that we'd like to think we're going to we're going to catalogue this year. Those guys are probably one in four horses. So, yeah, their input as far as how we run a, a parade, how we make it work for, for those larger vendors is important. But, yeah, same thing. Um, we, we look at those people with one horse or two horse. You know, I, I had a great chat with um, yeah, Alison Miles. But they had they had a terrific um, sale last year, uh, probably a price they'd never thought they'd achieve. And I spoke to them about what what are they looking for us to do in Melbourne, and they said, "Look, it wouldn't have been practical for them to come to Sydney." And that's why we split the sales up. We're originally going just to Sydney, um, but you know, Lee and Alison were, were an example of why we we decided to stay in Sydney uh, in in Melbourne as well. Um, I know talking to some of the big clients, it, it suits them to, to be able to spread their, their workload over two sales. And that's, it does give options. This is the thing. If anyone wants to go to Sydney, you're encouraging people from, from Melbourne to go to Sydney. You're not. It's not going to be New South Wales and Victoria, and, and there is going to be this split up of, of people, isn't there? Yeah, absolutely. The, the other thing, mate, we've got um, a little bit of um, uh, interest from uh, from Queensland that we didn't have last year because it, it's a it's a sensible league for them to, to bring horses to the Sydney market. Um, but it was a big big trip, or to send horses a long way. Um, to uh, to the Melbourne market, so well, I think that's that's one thing. The other one was the the early early sale. Like we, we're lucky, I think we're uh, the week after um, you said Cam's on on the week after New Zealand um, had their sales, and then um, we're um, we we come along, and I think there's um uh, there's a sale the week after that as well. So it's, it's it's a busy time of year, and to get that twentieth of Feb start, and then you've got the Bath sales towards the end of March, and for us in April, which is also, we're in 2023. That's the timing for our um, race series. Um, I think it, it, it works really well. We've got to be careful with um, Cam Bro. You pump his tyres up too much, Bardo. He can get ahead of himself, <laughs> mate. We, you, we can't we can't mention his name too much. But, but I mean, the guys at NZB, they've been terrific sports supporters of Campbell's comments, and they give a lot of feedback as well. And, you know, they take a lot of what you guys do, and they, they see what you're doing. That, that part's good, because you get that, that dual lot of feedback back um, from both sides of the, the, um, the ditch, I suppose. Um, look, we've appreciated their, um, um, their, their their feedback. Like I say, I've bounced a lot of stuff off, off Cam, and he's been um, he's been extremely helpful in our first year. Um, ultimately, our job is to try and promote the product, and, and you know, and, and to encourage more people to participate. You need quality breeders, and and you know, I think what their market is and what our market is, we've got so many common elements. Um, those guys do their online stuff really well, so we try and. Um, learn from that. We want to try and get better at that. They, um, the, the way those guys, you know, one thing about it, mate, we can't, we can't tell you. Um, <laughs> is that you ringing me? Yep. Just answer the FaceTime component of it. You'll be fine, mate. I might try. I, 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 I will keep trying things while we're while, <laughs> while we're going. You, you keep, yeah, but keep going there on what you're on, and I'll just see if I can't sort something out to get you back on because I think when people can see you, it makes a big big difference um, to, yeah. to what look, they're able to see. The, the, the one thing, mate, is like I was saying, that if we if, if we can make the, the industry better by doing things better, I think that's what it's about. Ultimately, you want more comp- you want more competition in the market, you want more confidence in the market, and um, that's, yeah, that's exactly what we're about. We're hoping we can, um, we, we can add value by, we'll, we'll listen to people and learn. But, you know, we've, we've uh, made the point there before, one step um, forward, you know, we've, we've had, what we used the, the phrase the other day, you won't gain momentum off just one step. And it's a matter of um, making sure we, we crawl before we walk and walk before we run. But we're, um, yeah, we're here for the long term and that's about yeah, doing little things and, and doing it well. You're doing a good job, Bardo, because I tell you, I'm pushing a lot of buttons here behind the scenes, mate, and you're, um, you, you're going very, very well. Well, there are. We're both back together, so we're, we're, we're fine. We're back rolling it, and we've got John online, which is which is good. Um, and MYO just says, I'm glad I didn't go live today. M, you don't have this much fun. M's doing a great job. So behind the scenes, mate, what's going on behind the scenes with MYO and the likes, building the, the website, getting the website up and done. Um, to to enhance your online sales, to build it together, that that's the key, isn't it? Yeah. Look, and look, what M does is all the little things, mate, that, that make us successful. We've got 
the branding is M. Um, the functionality, she's actually, you know, a lot of clients talk to her. Um, so she gets first-hand feedback on what people are hoping to be able to have um, as far as um, uh, as far as far functionality. And then she talks to our developers. Um, we've got the admin team, how we can try and process sales better. You know, it's it's a team effort. And look, behind us, we've, we've got, you know, three or four of the girls that do an exceptionally good job. Um, but yeah, M takes up takes an interest in just about everything, whether it be performance or um or uh, the uh, the standard bread market. So she's a, a a very important part of what we do. De- is indeed, and she came on today. I encourage anyone to go and watch that interview because M is a lot e- a lot easier on the eye than Bardo. Uh, that is that is definitely for sure. She had a beautiful setting too. She's got a lovely house uh, where she is. We spoke about a few things as well. Some of the key things that are going back. Um, Chris, Christy Peacock, kick off the night before the Sahel Parade and open bar. Okay, kick off. Well, oh, kick off the night before the Sahel Parade and open bar with a question mark. So I think that's a question. Yeah. Look, and I'd say, look, what we did last year, I think that was, um, you know, give them a little wrap there. We talked about um, her family. They're, they're pretty big on trying to have quality lamb. And we did, we made a point of trying to, yeah. Um, I guess tap into some of our red meat industry people and we did I think the parade uh, if we've got Saturday free absolutely I think Saturday night's an important night to have a function um, we have our parade Saturday afternoon and I think exactly maybe not have the, the drinks and um, and finger food at lunchtime but like during the afternoon we might actually do it in the evening and I think that's part of us or hopefully making something you know, a little bit more interesting, not just a sale. It's um, it's an event. But no, give, give her a thumbs up. I absolutely agree. And I'm hoping we can get those spare ribs that we got from um, Jack's Creek again last year because they were awesome. Yeah, and that's one other thing. You keep those for the people that are working. So when the sale actually <laughs> finishes, a poor old mate that's talked himself horse can actually get hold of some of this sensational meat. And I will say for my little brother too, because he came in to um, help me and um, and uh, yeah, he didn't get the opportunity. Poor old Bardo, if anyone's wondering, Bardo's looking at the roof. He can't see <laughs> He can't see me because I haven't got anything to hold you with, Bardo. I'm sorry about that. But you just look at the roof, you'll be fine. You can work it, you can work it out. It won't be a hassle. <laughs> um, rightio, so some huge things coming on one the spring sale today it closed um so entries have closed for that it'll go online from the third to the sixth um for september so we'll be promoting that we'll be promoting all the vendors in there going forward so we've got some different sort of chats going out and make sure people are aware of 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 what is actually um going on there for the spring for the spring sale um the sales we'll go we'll go this way because i think the last one's the best one so and this is pretty good this one here the nutrient 2022 yearling sales race incentives have been announced and i'm going to let you you do, do them but you know for your second year you must be blown away by the fact that you can get this as a minimum a minimum stakes uh stake money um on offer nine hundred and twenty five thousand dollars for the 2023 race series that will be conducted in melbourne yeah, ex- exactly, mate. Look, I think, again, like I say, you, you, you can't gain momentum from one step. Um, we, yeah, we, we want to, we run a lean business. We know what the costs of doing it are. Um, we're responsible about how we put that money up because, you, you know, we, we don't want to put something in there that's unsustainable. Um, and it, it's, you've got to choose your words carefully. I said last time we had a chat that, um, yeah, you don't want to put money up and then find because you've overstretched, you've got to then reduce price pools. Um, Someone said, oh, they told me you're reducing your price. Well, that's not the case. We want to invest yeah, in, in the business. Um, the sport needs to grow incrementally. And I think there's, it's about getting ownership and it's about the experience. And, and yeah, people getting people back on track. Um, like I say, you look at the facilities that, you know, being at Wagga again today, you look at, you know, Bathurst, Ballarat, like some of these regional centres, they've got some fantastic tracks. And I think, that's the thing, um, I guess, with our regional influence that we hope we can get back. And even our Cantraff community, get some of those guys to the, um, to the trots. You know, a bit of warmer weather and yeah, come and enjoy a bit of hospitality. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we're going to go to the next one in a minute. But that uh, actually, we're going to go on to the trotters. But just while I'm going, Jared Maloney's fired a question in, and um, he's great for Campbell's comments, Jared Maloney. So with COVID-19 here to stay for a while yet, it makes two C sales in different states much more realistic. Who's to say Victorians can get to New South Wales and vice versa um, come to the same sale? Hopefully, participants can get to both the sales in their own state. 
or if not, we will have to do it online and all the rest. But that is another part that is very, very key about this the splitting of these two sales. Yeah, and I think we learned that with um, the ready to run sale we did the first time. We yeah you know, we got involved with your business. It was our original plan was different to what the end plan was, but being able to give people choice now they can they could run a horse up in Vic or New South Wales, and likewise to sell in Vic or New South Wales. I think the, the key thing which we took on board when we started was. We want one race series. Um, you know, like I say, if we can sell 250 to 300 horses a year and have people, you know, paying up, it, 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 it gains momentum pretty quickly. But, you know, I, I think our, our big thing is find a market. Um, we want to encourage people to be part of the market. Earlier, early sales, and like I say, some of those vendors want to split their draft. You spread risk as far as vendors are concerned. Um, but then as the horses get to be three-year-olds and hopefully even four-year-olds, we want to just try and you know, keep encouraging it. Like one of the big things, like I said before, we want to try and promote is how do we get you know, more black type in mares, get better races for four-year-olds. There's, there's more of that. There's a huge opportunity for us to be a part of that, I think. There is indeed. But we must remember the Trotters, um, Australia's richest trotting race series, um, totaling $375,000. Again, minimum, and that is going to be run in Melbourne in the year 2023, which is just huge. And it's a commitment to both gates, which is very, very key um, in this day and age because a lot of the pacing guys wouldn't have said it a few years ago, mate, but uh, the trotters are definitely coming um, and they are a key component to any any sales and any vendors in, in you know going around. Mate, the, the thing, again, we talk about a couple of big vendors, um, Pat Driscoll, yeah, Haraz the Trotters and, and Yabby Dam, mate, they've been a fantastic supporter. Um, they've got fantastic, you know, stock. Um, Pat's initiative to try and grow those two year old slots, um, you know, for next year so that we've, we've got this next group of yearlings will now be able to race the group one stat of 62,500 for fillies and colts and then still come back for 125,000 dollars three year olds. Um, and I think it's almost, you, know, you try and hold the bull by the tail because. Pat's already said, okay, then we can talk about four-year-olds and let's get some of these near races. And I think it's really exciting for the sport generally, but with the, uh, the some of the guys involved in the trotting, um, I think you, you look at you know, 2023 and you talk to some of the um, um, HRB guys about their strategy around promoting trotting in, in Victoria in 2023. Our event now, our sales and the trotting gate has a lot of positives about it, mate. It's, it, it's really exciting to be part of. Absolutely. We've got some great names actually joined in, and please feel free to get involved in the um, um, conversations. We've got the likes of Teddy Caruana. Great to have you there, Teddy. Uh, good to see you. Shane Robertson, Brett Chapman, Emily Howe, Jenny Gallagher's on, on there, so welcome, Jen. Um, and then another guy who I don't know, VJ Kuma, but um, he, he's on there a few times. So I think there's a lot of countries in the world that are in lockdown, so VJ might have come across it. I don't know, but he might also be a buyer. So uh, wel welcome to Campbell's comments. But please, anyone has any questions make sure they they do get involved and yeah the trotters the trotters are definitely um key back to the spring sale bardo anyone that purchases a weanling or a yearling through there they also have the option of going into that race series um if they yep. if they purchase a yearling they actually get the purchase of the option of going into the um next year's race series as well i believe but if they pay yep. the bonus up um before well it's basically at the same time as the sales um commences the the, the yep. melbourne sale commences yeah, before before the end of the uh, before the end of April, effectively, or, or at the same time that that uh, that first half of April, uh, twenty twenty two. If you you buy one of these, you know, weaning slash yearlings, um, they'll nearly be yearlings by the time the sale starts. But um, yeah, if you find one of those and you want to pay them up, um, those horses can get access. And I think that's um, just something that we you know we talked to some of the not not the big stables, and they said, look. We've only got the ability to prep three or four if we were to put one of those up, and maybe even a future idea that look if we if we put two or three in the sale and we had one or two online, um, we said no. Look, if that works and that adds value to those horses, we're happy to give them equal opportunity. It's probably the one thing with ours: non-sale entries can't come into the sale into the race series, so it's a way that people can participate if they want to buy a horse. Want to buy a horse? Um... Christy Peacock's asked a question there, which, Christy, give me two secs. With um, NZB and my association with them, the only sale I've been to is their weanling sale in New Zealand. They're next level. They are something very different. And it's not they're trying to get rid of the ones they don't think will sell at the sales. It's purely Alabar and Woodlands and the amount of horses that they have. They can't 
they can't um, look at you. You found yourself a hole to have a look at how you're going. Um, yeah. they, <laughs> they can't. Um, they can't handle that amount of stock. So weanling sales, online sales are very, very important, aren't they? Yeah, absolutely. Mate, I, I think um, liquidity was the word we used quite a bit now. People wanted to have options for their market so they can um, they can yeah, sell horses on and, and then hopefully we see that money reinvested. And I think it's, um, it's about buyer confidence. We've got a lot of these spring horses that are coming in, which you know, was a request that we have on every quarter. They won't be big numbers, but I believe more than half the horses catalogue will be unreserved this next sale, which I think that's what a few people have learned after our June sale. Um, but, you know, we want to um, we, we want to see horses move, and that's what the vendors are saying. Look, we're putting them in there to sell them. Um, I know that the, the Yabby Dam draft will be there again. Same thing that, that they had a good sale last time because yeah, you know, people realised that that opening did that on the market for sale. So I think that's that's something that hopefully, we, like I say, we looked at the way. Um, NZB have done their marketing and I think they do it well and that's our, our plan, we'll just keep doing them every quarter, we'll get better, we'll get feedback um, the one big difference with our catalogue is it doesn't close incrementally, it, it, it happens if there's a bit on the page the, well, the whole lot stays open uh, and that was something really new for, for the um, harness racing people so we've, we've got to make sure people understand that, but, you know, if lot 10 you get our bid, you can still come and buy lot one. It's not because it's the better way, it's just it's the way we've done it before now. Um, and we'll listen if it doesn't suit, we'll have to change. Abs absolutely, and we will get that point across. Christy Peacock, her question was, how, how many weanlings in the spring sale, roughly? Um, Emma's actually come back online. She's going to check if she can. Um, if M can't find out, Christy, it will be out in the next week. Um, it's just a matter of uh, just just waiting at the minute. But um, if M can't find out, uh, she'll get back to you. Yeah. Your question is definitely uh, definitely getting answered. The the reason I was smirking when we were saying about that online sale, I th like so people have trouble they see lot one they want lot one sold and then they want to go over to lot two lot three jared maloney i think he had lots one and three now if anyone was probably inconvenienced by the fact that it wasn't uh lot one sold and jared maloney was the one he still purchased from that sale as well so he was able to to work his head around it and go around there and and do it that way um and he didn't find an issue with it he sold horses and he bought horses so i think people just got to get their their head around it it is not gavel house it's not any of the other online auctions that have been going on it, it is a little bit different that wasn't the smirk the reason for the smirk is that the peanut peanut on the other end of the camera being me will actually also understand how each of the lots come up and i'll still give a running commentary through the spring sale when it's when it's closing coming to close to closing days on the time on the sunday and so people can tune in they'll be able to get a regular update on wheat where each of the lots are and we'll keep people updated we'll keep doing it a bit differently i'll um i'll be calling on m that's for sure so um yeah we'll, if people can't get their head around it still we'll be live ask they can fire the questions in and we can get it involved yeah and and i think m's hopefully finding it but i i reckon It'll be eight to ten weanlings slash yearlings. I reckon it'd be a rough a, a rough guess. I reckon this year, um, and then then those I reckon probably half of those will be Yabby Dan trotting um, yearlings. So yeah, uh, again, as Patrick said, he said I, can't, I just can't physically handle any more than what we've got. So. Yeah, and Christy, yeah. just for so Christy, um, she'll say it there too. But uh, because it will be in September, they won't be weanlings. They'll be actually yearlings, so there won't be any wean, weanlings available. But they'll be yearlings that can still still go through the next season's draft. So just, just uh, so, make, make sure she knows if she buys one there, she can still come to Melbourne and uh, we can have a beer and a and a bit of food before we go and buy another one on the Sunday in in April as well. Something tells me Christy will be there We're very, very, very quickly. That's for that's for sure. I've got um, computers everywhere doing things around me. It's very confusing. I don't know where to look. If anyone's wondering what I'm doing, I'm just trying to keep on keep on touch. Radio, this is my my um I, this is the one i love the most but i suppose is the right way of saying it rehoming the standard bread and i want anyone to get involved um in in this um but this rehoming the standard breads at the 2022 classic camp draft and sale there'll be six mystery trainers um have great uh, they've agreed to take um six of the standard breads and they're going to rehome them and then they're going to have a you'll have a a um auction at the end of that and in that auction you'll also be raising money for for charity is that correct yeah look mate, it, it's probably the, the thing I, i'd encourage 
if you're in the harness racing game and you can find a few days off in that first week of February, um, and assuming you can get to New South Wales, if you're a Victorian listening there now, mate, we had last year was 10.7 million. It's nearly an 11 million dollar week. Um, we have around 1,800 campcraft horses on those grounds for that week. 600 sale horses and about 1,200 competition horses. It gets um, a big following from all over Australia, every mainland state, uh, often as they come across as well. But we're going to have six um, yeah, selected horses, try and get them 14 3 to 15 3 hands. Um, we're going to get horses that are 3 to 9 years of age so that they're in that, that right age bracket. And we're asking them to be horses that the, the people that have handled them have reason to feel that they can re, they can readjust and but to give you a little insight I've got a mate of mine who's a seven time uh, Manson Snow River winner uh, he's also um, you know, a, a multiple saddle bronc champion uh, he runs a very big place you know, in southern New South Wales where they do every everything on horseback you know, well over a thousand breeding cows um, and his attitude is one he wants to have the horses that can be pack saddled he will go mustering every day these guys got off at eight weeks uh, training. Every one of them have said they'll take the horse for five months at no extra charge. And yeah, this fellow in particular is going to actually uh, try. He's a saddle bronc champion. His son practices every afternoon. And he's going to see if the horse will adapt as a pickup horse, as a rodeo pickup horse. And we've got some of our clients in North Queensland and the Territory saying, look, you know, those, those massive floods a few years ago lost a lot of horses and said, look, do you think they'll actually suit this project? You know, if they're robust, they can handle big miles, uh, they're safe because a lot of the kids that come out first year jackaroos might have a fairly limited um, exposure to horses. Um, we'll try them, and I think I think the breed can do that. And I think it's probably one thing that, one, it'll be a lot of fun because the guys I pick are very good at what they do, two ladies, four men. Uh, but secondly, they've got the same passion for a horse that I've got and, and you've got. We want to, so these horses genuinely find a new home, and that's something that I think is a little bit unique to the industry that we bring. Um, and yeah, I think if we can do that, Peter Nugent from Harness Racing New South Wales, who chairs the uh, the New South Wales um, Rehoming Company, um, has been awesome to work with. Um, yeah, Amy in uh, in the, uh, the, the Amy Cupid in the team, yeah, really really passionate about it. They've been looking at horses. Not every horse they've, they've looked at they've said suits us. So. Um, yeah, what's your space? I think it'll be a lot of fun. Uh, try and get some um, promotion about how these horses are coming along and be part of that journey. Absolutely. And I alluded to um, M early on today. I will be catching up with the six of the guys at some point in time because um, I think it's very, very key is, is, is this re- rehoming. And I think hats off to um, New South Wales harness rehoming. Um, I've got to get my head around them and, and the likes. And, and, and I know that Hero are going to um, react a little bit to it too, which is good. They've been talking to you as well. So there is a lot going on. It is, it's a, it, it is an area that we must grow, um, and you found two areas that can really grow, and that's your commitment to harness racing, um, not just commitment to Nutrien, Equine, Standard Breads, Tamworth, where you're just trying to make a dollar. Um, you're actually committing to the industry and trying to, for long term to keep it actually going. We've got a very good in, uh, comment in there. I don't, well, I shouldn't say that. I haven't actually read it all, but um, Alan Galloway has given us one. But before I go to that, we um, we should, I should, um, we just should say well done to, to New South Wales Harness Racing Rehoming to, to, to looking outside the square and doing something that um, could be sensational. Look, and, and um, I had a good chat with uh, Brent Fisher from uh, HRV today, actually. He rang and same thing, like like you said, I think there's things with, that are really important as far as, you know, advantage in, in business, but same thing he said, mate, this is a collaborative thing that you know, the industry really wants. And um, like I said, the guys and girls, I know these people personally and they are fun people. Uh, they're exceptionally good at what they do. Um, they've all got a pretty good story, but when we said eight weeks, not one of them. I said, no, nah, let's get the horse to us as soon as you can. And but they'll make it part of their business. And I, I I've got I've got some, some guys here that are little do different things, you know. I've, 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 uh, I think it'll be an exciting chapter for uh, for us and it's, it's actually again like I say, a chance to if I can show the uh, the Tantraft world, which is a significant market we've got, um, you know, cattle price, the big stuff, we can convert some of that into um Part ownership in a few standard regions over the coming years. That's not necessarily, that's certainly on the agenda as a hidden 
hidden opportunity. So if, if, and I've asked a number of people, get up to Camelot, come and meet these guys. Um, we'll make sure we look after everyone and give them a chance to get to know each other because um, there's plenty of them ask questions. You know, what are these sandies? What are you doing with them? Um, and I think this is the next step in bringing the two businesses together. Right, we've got some big names giving us positive comments back. I shouldn't say us, they're giving you. I think I think it's just me because I'm sitting here. But yes, Em, I do need to get to uh, Northern Territory. So we'll go back to Christy very quickly. Um, I think Em put there uh, eight or nine yearlings there'll be in the system, Christy, for, for the uh, spring sale. So make sure you look out for those. Rightio, Alan Galloway. Um, hi, gentlemen. Fantastic in initiative rehoming through the camp drafting community. Standard breads are kind, gentle, quick learners, perfect learners and experts experts alike. Kind regards, Alan. So thank you very much for that. I was sitting back um, watching it, probably having a quiet convenial. So that's all good. Cam, Cam Ray. Can I throw a teaser? I think, and this is just thinking on the run. If we can get, yeah, get this first pilot program off the ground, um, there's going to be some great stories about that. I'd love to see horses that, that, that maybe come back after their racing career, even if it is successful, that the likes of you know, Alan's business and others can let's get behind them and sponsor them into it. I, I think it's fun in promoting our brands and actually, you know, really, really, I, I'd love to see you know, an, an Alabar entry and, and some of these other, other you know, breeders and, and stud farms, you know, so look, here is it, not the horse that, that comes, you know, without, without, from our stable. He's done his career on the track, let's... Um, Let's soon enjoy that next career because um, I know talking to you know, a really good friend of mine in the territory, um, and you know she just said, "Look, we get a lot of first year jackaroos and jillaroos that, that are, are critical to our business. Um, they need safe horses, and she knows the standard breeds a little bit." And she said, "Look, we, we'll, we'll try them out here and um, get the right ones." Um, I've got a mate of mine won a Warwick Gold Cup, He's, which is like the, the uh, Melbourne Cup of, uh, of camp drafting. He said, "Look." You know, he said, I'm a, I'm a grandfather now. He lives north of Hamworth. He said, I'm going to get a spring cart. And if you can get one you think will suit, for me to go and check, you know, cows and calves with my grandchildren. He said, that's how I went around with my granddad. Would you find one? And I'm seriously, he said, he's already saying, find the best one out of them. I will buy it. So I think there's people out there that will actually have a lot of fun with this, this whole project. Yeah, I know what he's thinking. It's it's a long way to fall when you get a bit older. So, And I can say the older part quite quite. Um, quite comfortably when you were saying that i've still got a couple of things to read out but when you were saying that I, I thought how cool would it be from a promotional point of view that you have your harness racing colors on these rehomers as they're cutting out a cattle and then they go through so you know potentially stable share the load as far as financially um spread the love a little bit and you know we could end up with 10 or so stables potentially in tamworth um you know promoting their colors looking out for new owners in a new business, but also, you know, like working it two ways. So you know, it, it, there's definitely the way we could do some things together. You know, Bardo, what have you done? He went and touched a button. No, no, I'll tell you what it was. You've got me on a mobile phone and my wife jumped in my car to duck up and the water on your gate. That's okay. We're, we're, we're going... We're... We're, we're can, going we, can we give that a plug? We've, we've just we've just finished pruning eleven hundred cherry trees at our place, so she's making sure we water them to try and grow some cherries for the locals. <laughs> and I'll be I'll be looking for those at at around Christmas. But yeah, I think there's a good way we can actually promote the business in a very different way. Alex Early's it, there. It, 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 I was going to say, mate, there was a um, um, one of the clothing companies actually already said, "Oh, any chance we could put our brand on?" You know, one of the sponsored riders. I think actually what you said there makes sense. If there's if there's some of these guys there that we could we could work together and actually getting some racing colours on a few of these guys, I reckon that'd be a lot of fun. Particularly even if we reproduce some of the horses from you know, where they originated from, what those stables look like, I reckon that'd be a lot of fun. But then, how big a win is it for harness racing that we're getting out to a different audience, potentially new owners? Yeah, you know, yeah, for they, sure. They 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 come back to to like the David Moran being the ambassador, wearing the colours out. People see the nutrient colours racing. People go and go there and see, you know, like I've got blue blue and gold colours. They probably look and say, what is this? But then, you know, they meet you later on. You might be able to sell and, and make your business grow. So you've got to try things. I try things all the time. You and I started this as a um, 
a computer hookup and have a look at us now. We're on phones that are getting taken over by cars. Right, Cambrai turned around and said, well, well done on the rehoming program. Um, credit to your team. So that's Cambrai from NZB. Um, anyone wondering? And then Joanne Anderson, as a passionate rehomer and a standy owner, I'm very excited to see these wonderful horses retrained to such an exciting and different discipline. And I agree, Joanne. I think it's... Um, it's very, very exciting. Um, it's clearly going to be another junket for me to get away. I, I reckon that's why Cam Bray's chiming in. I think he, he likes these little junkets. He likes the idea of them. He's, um, he, he wants to get out and, and, and about. But I think it's going to be huge. Um, and I, I, I can't wait to promote it. Well, look, one thing I know when we did do this, I know we, Joanne actually, we spoke about it. Um, you know, just to get some feelers out, I know she has some, you know, reached for some people that might have had the rights to the horses and, you know, was right behind us. And I, appreciate that. The other one I was going to say, the pro project for those three days, and we're going to actually give these horses a uh, freestyle workout where the trainers can show us what they like for that first evening. Uh, we're going to have an award each night, and that'll be a, a, a viewer's pick now. Emma's probably wondering how she's going to do this. I haven't told her yet, but we want to do it online, just like the voice. You can vote for your, your, your preference out of it, and we'll have something there. The second night will be but like an obstacle course time trial event, something a bit of a crossover between an Australian stock horse time trial and a Manson Snow River Challenge to give them something that we'd expect them to do other ridden horses. And then the third night will be uh, a dairy calf camp draft challenge. And like you said, we're looking to put a $5,000 donation for the winning rider to their preferred uh, charity. So the idea to raise money, but more importantly, you know, raise, raise awareness of these horses. But then we'll offer them online on the Friday, Saturday of our sale um, on over two days on Options Plus so people can bid on them. But like I say, I've got two or three people want to get them up into the Territory in Queensland as mustering horses. One wants one to uh, take his grandchildren around. You know, he's, they run over 2,000 breeding cows. So I think we're getting traction with, you know, scale operators that might be interested. Absolutely. And as I said, Barty, you and I can talk for a long time. I see MEO said there, will we see uh, Cambrai in Tamworth? I think if he can get into Australia, M, he'll be everywhere. Um, but it's we've just got to hopefully, uh, with COVID, everything um, settles down. Um, not only the rehoming, Bardo, but you've also spoke passionately about trying to get some four-year-old mares racing up and going again into the into the country. And that fits this bill, trying to make more, more racing available for some of these racing stock. Yeah, look, definitely. Um, the mares, where we come from in, in performance horse, mares are the gold. Where you know the, the colts represent a really tough market because you know it, it's it's a tough breeding market, just like any any breeding operation. Um, I was just surprised at, at how few black type races there were once you get past your um, your juvenile events, but particularly the fillies. Um, for me, being selfish as a sales agent. If I've got a horse with a black top age, it's easy for me to promote that progeny and promote what, what happens. So we're committed to two-year-olds, in particular our three-year-old program. And what we've done, we've talked to a number, like the likes of HRV, New South Wales, um, and, and other industry participants. How do we grow into fours? How do we get something that's you know that's specifically focused on raising the uh, the value of, of, of the mares in the market? You know, I think we've We've had terrific um, traction with the trotting gate, um, but you know, uh, being bipartisan, the single thing I think that would be great to improve is the um, that real value of the filly. Yeah, and um, uh, sorry, I just got a very I shouldn't have done that. I got a text message from a mate who's just told me I'm on TV. He's been cheeky, but we're uh, we're on there, and it, it is key. Cambrai can't be there. I forgot about that because the New Zealand yielding sales is the week after, and, and that's a problem. It's a very very busy time. But these guys that you're drafting with are going to be busy trying to sell horses as well, but they're keen enough to put them through um, and, and go for there through the draft. And the mayor's part is huge because we want to stop going horses going overseas, going to America to, to race. We want to make it more financial. And effectively, it makes a filly at a yearling sale more financial if there is more black type races for them going forward, not only in the breeding barn, well, but, but then also as a racehorse. And, and I think um, Melbourne for us this year showed that when you know we, we, we see a high-profile buyer from New Zealand coming by our top five colt out of out, pacing colt out of the sale. I think I think that's that's a, that's a huge one. I know I know uh, um, Cam and the guys in in um, in New Zealand obviously keen to see that, that the money at home. But I know he said that this is this year is a, is, is a, a, a smaller um, 
you know, proper yearlings. So it's, it's opportunity there. I think there's some, they've got great genetics, great mare families, which is why the Australians go there. But I think it's also just fantastic to see some of the New Zealand um, interest that we saw at our first sale. Yep, and, and there's been a lot of dialogue backwards and forwards um, about horses being paid up for, for the Vic Bread. Uh, sorry, not the Vic Bread, the New Zealand Sire Stakes over there. because it, and, yep. uh, and I know talking to Martin Pearson that there's been a large influx off the back of um, the top-selling colt last year at, at the sale um, and that going forward. But uh, we definitely could talk forever. I'm not sure if we've got anyone else wanting questions. M, M and Cam are having a private conversation between each other. I, I, I don't know what's going What's going on there? Yo, he might have gone somewhere, but that's uh, that's okay. John Power just said to me, sorry for putting me off. Johnny, you, you've made yourself famous on TV. Um, it's okay. But um, there is plenty going on. But the main reason we came on, and, the, and look, the number one reason we did come on is to make sure that people are aware, definitely staying in Sydney. The reason for the sales being split is purely because weight of numbers. Some people weren't sure in Victoria if they could get to Sydney. And, and and vice versa and so it was by demand um and you're 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 listening to people you're changing up what you wanted to do initially you just want to go sale for sale for sale but once you start talking to people you've got to change things up to what people want uh mate, we put that online survey which which gave us terrific feedback and you you, you like the, the the nice feedback but you also got to listen to the constructive stuff and you know <laughs> One thing I know, like I say, I'll, I'll, I'll take credit for it, but M and the team behind us have done the work on getting our website and our systems better. Um, so we, were, we we didn't do it for you know, for one year, like I say. We um, I, I think the competition in the market's great. One thing about uh, the, the standard bread industry, every other market we've ever participated in has competition, um, and yeah, you know, we're used to that. And we've got a number of you know people that have you know come and said, "I'll." Oh, this year I'd like to sell all and they're going to go to Sydney. This year we might actually put our later drop bowls in Melbourne, but yeah, I, I think yeah, the, the important thing is that people make informed decisions. Um, I'm yeah, really pleased with what we've done, um, thrilled with the amount of support we've had, and I, I guess yeah, we'll continue to, yeah, I guess deliver, deli- deliver a, 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 the right environment so people can actually buy and sell horses. Like it's, you, you've got to have the right article on the day, and like I say, the, the stories I'm looking forward to you know, are the ones that we talked about, um, you know, Lee and Alison Miles, or was it, um, that David Moran's just got into a second prep, and that's exciting to me to see young couple that have got a, you know, one horse that, that tops the fillies in a sale, and, you know, it, by a side that, 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 you know, people are excited to see come through. So I think that's, that's the stuff that really makes my business, or makes our job easy. And they've got a sweet Lou in next year's sale. Just thought I'd put that up there, Alan. Just to, yeah. unfortunately, because <laughs> it's the opposition for Alan Galloway. But you got to you got to have some fun, um, Jenny Gallagher. You're more than welcome. She says great work. But as I said, we're just trying to get the message out there. And um, you know, like I said, there was a few rumblings that there was definitely going to be no sale. There is going to be a sale. There's going to be good numbers. Um, you've got a commitment from quite a few people, and there's going to be good numbers. And there's still plenty of time. As I said, it doesn't it doesn't actually close until the 30th of August. Sorry, open until the 30th of August. So there is plenty of time for people to make sure they can get involved um, with the sale. Um, and if they want to, Bardo, uh, I have got a slide here somewhere. I wonder where that is. Um, they can get in contact um, with you guys, can't they? Yeah, absolutely, mate. It, it's, yeah, on the, if you go to the new Trend F1 website, you'll find all our numbers there. Um, mate, what most people should be able to find me now. It, you, you'll put something up. I know Em will have it on Twitter, on Facebook. Um, don't don't we, get too confident I'll put something up, but I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, the, yeah, the, but look, our phones are always there. The thing, the thing is, you know, I just... Um, we made the point, you know, we, we're lucky enough this year, which is which is great. We've got some vendors for the first time that didn't, um, some city-based, Sydney-based, some uh, Victorian-based that have said that they'd like to give us a crack this year with some horses. And um, like I said to someone, you know, we, we, we look forward to the competition. The, the hard work was done two years ago when you're actually selecting which um, which side to use. And it, like all that work's been done. We stand over them for five minutes, but we try and promote them hopefully for four or five months leading up to it. But more importantly, we've got to also make sure we bring more people ultimately into um, into the buying gallery that want to uh, add competition to the market. 
absolutely. And I delivered for you, mate. I've got the phone numbers up there. So we've got Mark Barton on 0419 488 256. Ian Carmichael for the Victorian people. Ian Carmichael's your go-to man. Um, 0428 510 Darby Smith there on 0267 655 And the lovely MEO on 0418 923 All those phone numbers are there. Um, I've just got to get rid of a couple other things. Um, I can do I can do a lot of things behind the scenes from time to time, but oh, I did pretty good to find that one. I, sh- I should have had it there, but please feel free to contact you. But you can contact everyone through the social media feeds as well. MEO is only happy to do that. Plus, um, Emma at nutrientequine.com.au is a new email address. Get in touch through me. Um, there's no, you're always contactable, isn't that right, Bardo? Yeah, exactly. And the other one now, Mike, with, with Ian in the branch of Bendigo, um, you know, his daughter Melita is in is insurance in the branch of Bendigo. And um, lucky for the Victorians, we've actually just transferred my son, Jack, is actually working in uh, Newton Bendigo as well. So there's actually three people in central Victoria now that are quite in touch with what, what, it, what we're about. And with COVID the way it is, we've still got a team on the ground, uh, along with... Uh, yeah, the support you've given us. Uh, people need some help. We've got people that can get around and look at horses or help in any way if you need some help. And, and that is key too. Like, um, there's a lot of ways we can get the, get the messaging out there. Um, Melita can be very forceful. You know that too, don't you? She can she can push you in the right direction. She tells you to keep lifting your game. She she keeps giving me the the hurry up from time to time. Don't you worry about that. So, which is good. Um, <laughs> He gets it from a father, and I'm lucky my son's actually going to get an injection of Ian, I'd say, over the next six months as well. Well, it's about passion. It's not about just doing the job. It's about passion, and, 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 and that, that, that is key. So, yeah, look, those numbers were there. If anyone wants to get there, that's for sure. Alibar, 100% of our yearlings are coming back to Mark. Competition's always great for the customer. So they are, there's a huge commitment there from um, Alan Galloway from Alibar that they're giving you 100% of their yearlings. Um, so whether they're spread between Sydney and Melbourne or they all go to Melbourne, I suppose that'll be something he and Brett will sit down and work out over time. But um, it's, well, it's great that they that get that sort of commitment there for everyone to see. Yeah. And look, one thing I um, I know, I've, I've tried to tease it out of Brett, what have we got anything special? And I think by um, the fact that they're staying very quiet, I, I know Alan does have one favourite already in his, um, in his stable that he thinks is pretty special. So it's, uh, yeah, it, it's a privilege to sell any horse for somebody. Like I say, equine sales versus livestock sales are a very different market. It's quite a um, personal, there's a lot of emotion attached to them. You get quite attached. You know, you put yearlings into, into a prep barn, you know, particularly the small vendors, it's a um, it's a significant part of your time, that six, eight, ten weeks of those horses that they're with you every day. Um, so we don't take it lightly. And like I say, our, our job is to try and have the right atmosphere, the right environment. Um, you know, we had people that, um, that took advantage of some of our ready-to-run options um, for those that, that try and put some base in that 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 that, that low of eighty horse, and, and that's the other thing. Um, now we want to try and look at opportunities. How can we help, help lift that market as well? So yeah, mate, we, we're in it with our eyes open. And one thing we will do is we will make mistakes, but we'll fail fast. We we'll get it right the next time. Um, ready to run sale is going to still go ahead too. Alan Galloway has got back to you with the Sun Beach somewhere at a Nike Franco um, Colt is his pick. And if Alan is still able to get back to me before we go offline, I would imagine that's nearly the end of the um, Sun Beach Somewheres. I don't think there'd be too many after that. That would obviously would have been frozen semen, but I wouldn't have thought there'd be a lot of that around. So that will be a very, very sought after cult, that's for sure. So it'll be yeah, interesting. I, I, I knew we had. I knew that the the, 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 the stable was pretty interested um, to see one particular you know, particular cult coming on. So uh, again, like I say, you, you, you want to sell. You know, top sell horses, and I think the, the the next kick for me, and it was actually fun to see some of those um, ready to run horses last year. Um, you know, we had Lettuce Trot, you know, the, uh, the the one we sold out of Sydney that won a thirty thousand dollar race there um, yeah, not that long ago. So yeah, you know, the, the people have bought that horse, got their money back, you know, in in a matter of months, and I think that's exciting. I'm, I'm waiting to see the next one. I, I could be in trouble because Melita uh, Carmichael just joined <laughs> joined into the conversation, so I might be in trouble in a minute. Um, Alan sent back that Brett really wanted to take him to Kentucky, so I think that's how high they they really hold that Sunbeat somewhere. Um, Colt, I might have to get up there one day and just have a uh, have a chat 
um, to both Alan and Brett but um, about him and we might try and do something different and I'm sure I, I, I enjoy Alan's company I must say so I'd love to do a live with Alan we could be talking for three hours Bardo it could be very funny I keep uh, looking at the wrong place I think we'll call it a night mate um, as I said we've got the, the messaging out there that um, if you want if basically the end of the message is if you want to find out go to the source don't don't listen to the rumors just just ring you guys up um and go from there um is is the best way to do it i'll throw those phone numbers quickly back across the the, the page but but that's the end of the day isn't it that's the messaging is to to get in touch with you guys if you have any doubts or any worries at all and um you're only too willing to get back to people yeah absolutely mate no, like i say we've really appreciated the support we've had the first year um and uh, we look forward to you know going to Sydney and Melbourne uh, for 2022. And uh, like we say, every quarter now we'll have a uh, our spring sale first weekend in September. Then we'll have summer first weekend December. Then we'll go autumn and winter, uh, and we're ready to run November with the sale on the weekend of the um, the Breeders' Crown on the 20th of November. So that gives us five online sales and uh, and two yearly sales at this day. So yeah, it's got to be a busy time. Absolutely, and if people want any exposure, give me a yell. Um, Jenny Gallagher, one person I always want to have a chat with. Actually, get in touch with me. Um, I'm only too willing to have a, help, a chat either via via this messaging way, which started off one way and we ended up another way. Um, there's plenty of ways we can actually do it. So please, only feel free to um, get in touch with me if you want to try and get the brand out there and the awareness out there. But but I, I love working with you guys. Um, this was an impromptu one, but. Um, we thought very timely. So thank you very much for joining me, mate, and uh, really appreciate your time. Look, the last thing I would say, mate, we've talked about camp glasses buying standard red. Don't forget to see if Alan might like to come and buy a couple of camp glasses too. Well, he likes his phones. He, he, <laughs> he definitely likes his, likes his phones, that's for sure. Um, some of the text messages I'm getting right at the minute, it's fair to say I'm in a bit of trouble, but that's okay. It'll be, be, it'll be, be all good today. All right, that'll, that'll do us. Right, we haven't had any other chats coming in, but um, yeah, we'll see if we can't get Al to buy himself a, a horse. He, he, he'll get back to us. But but uh, thank you so much, mate. Been a bit, lot, bit of fun, and hopefully we've answered some, some queries for a lot of people. Sounds good, mate. Appreciate your time, and thanks everyone for tuning in.